We're here at the Barclays Center here in Brooklyn, New York, and this is the Straight Out of Brooklyn card. And in the co-main event, Jarrell Miller defeats Johan Duhapis by unanimous decision. And in the main event, Daniel Jacobs is victorious over Magic Selecki by unanimous decision. And now, let's go to post. But first, J.C. Papaleo caught up with Julian Sosa after his victory against Larry Ventus. This is J.C. Papaleo here for the Crystal Heart Show. I'm here with Julian Sosa, straight out of Brooklyn, and I want to know, Julian, how tough was your fight tonight? Uh, to me, this is just personally one of my toughest, just because it was a new experience, my first time getting cut. Um, it was just a feeling I had to adjust to in the ring while we were fighting. And, um, you can say it was more of a challenge because it happened in the first round. So that was just, I had to prepare myself mentally, physically, and just keep pushing myself knowing that I have a job to do, regardless of the cut, and that's to get the win, and thankfully we did. Were any jitters fighting here in Brooklyn with all your family behind? Did you feel a little bit more extra pressure? Um, at times, the only time I do feel the pressure, honestly, is when um, it's the ring walk, just knowing that's when I'm preparing myself mentally, knowing I'm telling myself, you got to go to work. It's time to go to work. You have a whole bunch of family and friends looking out here for you. And now is your time to shine. So, but once I step into that ring, it's all over. My mentality switches and it's time to go. It's time to do my job and that's to get the win. Now, your weight, is this the weight that you're comfortable at fighting at? What are you going to stay at this time? Um, what would you fight weight tonight? Uh, yes, uh, this fight, uh, we believe it was 144. I usually fight a little bit lower, 141, 142. But I was still comfortable with this um, at this weight. But I, I am going to go back down for my next fight to the lower 40s. Um, maybe even 142, 140 flat. But that's where I feel most comfortable in that way. It's becoming a very competitive weight class. I just saw Mikey Garcia may vacate or stay at that weight. But we have a couple of other fighters that are coming at the 140 level. Um, my last question for you would be, like, what's next for you? What's next? Um, I mean, first right now, you know, I just want to take a little bit of time to rest, let the cut heal proper. But... Once uh, the cut is healed and I'm back in that gym working hard, um, I'm coming for it all, you know. Um, I'm really hungry and I'm really uh, just motivated to succeed in this boxing game, you know. So whatever, whoever is put next uh, across that ring, I'm, I'm going to be ready to get the win. Well, I'm here with Julian Sosa. He had one by decision tonight. We're very proud. Brooklyn's own New York City. You can see him boxing here live on Showtime. And we want to wish him the best of luck and look forward to seeing everybody here at the fights. Thank you, Julian. Hey, todo, todo los junto mexicano, gracias por todo. And I'm going to keep coming strong and we're going to keep fighting good. So, para todo el público y el um, mexicano y el público latinoamericano aquí en Nueva York, queremos desearles mucha suerte a Julian Sosa y seguirlo apoyando en todas sus peleas en el próximo combate que tenga. Muchas gracias. Yes, I, I got, um, I believe it was, I had two types of stitches because it was such a deep cut. I had four in the actual uh, layers of the skin and then outwards. So it was like in and out of the of my actual skin. I believe I had four in and uh, I believe six or seven across the eyebrow. They put you out of commission for what, about six months? Or? No, they said a uh, mandatory 60-day uh, suspension. How long? Six, uh, two months two months yeah well, let's all hope that it heals properly and yeah come back forever thank you julian thank you Ron miller has won a very impressive and exciting fight today it was a wba eliminator for the win over kenta char for the regular wba world title um uh, and uh as you know jarell is not short of word for words and everybody including myself thinks he did, he did a great job tonight and uh first of all let's have a round of applause for the champ for brooklyn new york Go 12 rounds and still smile like that, man. <laughs> that boy was tough. Uh, I mean, you want to hear me speak now? Um, I didn't have, you know, I always speak from the mind and the heart, man. That boy was tough. But like I said before, I was prepared for 12 rounds. Um, I felt a lot better than I did my last fight. Um, I just want to let my hands go. A lot of more things I want to improve on. Um, I can't take nothing from his performance. I can't say anything was hurting me. My hands felt good. My elbow held up pretty good. Uh, my win was pretty good for, you know, people doubting me that I couldn't be do 12 rounds for a 300-pound guy. But I just proved to you, 
I threw nearly 800 punches in 12 rounds, you know, for heavyweight. Um, I felt good. He come with a couple good shots. Uh, you know, the, I had two good sparring partners, you know, a number one amateur, uh, Solomon, and my boy Adam Kornaki from uh, Post Kaposka, my Polish brother. I mean, the only two sparring partners I really had. Also, uh, middleweight, known as Allen. Um, you know, I had to use what I only had, what I had was in, in, in front of me, you know. You got to understand, these guys are calling me out as I'm fighting, you know. There's nobody else that wants to fight me, you know. Even when I fought Joe Washington, he had a full camp. He just came out of Klitschko camp, training for Vladimir. Training with Vladimir for help AJ, you know. He had a full camp to get ready for me. Instead of him fighting, you know, had a three weeks notice when he fought, you know, Wilder. You know, it went five rounds a while to giving him help, but I beat him up every round. You got Morris Wack, he fought Fort Pavekin on like two, three weeks notice, you know, and um, gave Pavekin a run for his money, and I stopped him earlier. Then we have this guy here, Johan Dupas, tough brother. He only, he took the fight with Pavekin on 48 hours notice. 48 hours notice, he took a, a tile eliminator against a guy that was caught on PEDs and still went out there and gave his best, even though he got stopped by Pavekin on 40 hours notice. These guys I'm fighting have full camps, eight weeks, uh, 12 weeks, full camps, they're getting ready for me, and I'm still making it look pretty good. You know, so I want guys, you know, give me my respect. You know, I'm 300 pounds and I'm moving, I'm doing what I'm doing, I'm having fun in there. So like I said, if AJ want to come to Brooklyn, I would gladly accept, and I will run him in the ground. His condition ain't better than mine, his head movement ain't better than mine, and I got power. You know what I mean? I got power, trust me, it's there. But some guys, you just can't get out the way you want, and you got to go back to boxing. That's what boxing's about, you know, it's getting the win. And um, having fun, you know, that's what I cannot say, you know, like I said, I'm not, I don't got no jokes to crack, not right now, you know, but uh, Anthony G. 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 Joshua come get this work all day. I'm ready to toast the English muffin. We cook French fries tonight, so English muffins next time. <laughs> uh, man, this, uh, shout out to my team, uh, my coaches, uh, Harry, Sosa, uh, my cousin Jamal, Mike on my team. Uh, you know, all my boys that came out, uh, you know, can watch my back. You know, a lot of things been going on rough in New York lately. So, you know, I wasn't taking no chances. And I brought my squad out with me, man, because I'm not risking nothing. I worked too hard to get here for somebody else's mistake, you know. So I'm glad for all my boys that came out with me, man. And, uh, you know, Fab, Ed, uh, big cousin in the back, you know, looking like he a middle linebacker on defense. You think I'm big. He's big. See him right there, the guy with the dress? He's huge. Imagine him running into you. So... Thanks, everybody, for coming out, man. Uh, it was dope. Any questions? Yeah. You mentioned before that you wanted this fight to go four to five rounds and you wanted a 19th knockout. Do you feel you missed any opportunities for a knockout? Oh, yeah, most definitely. I think, I, I think what it was, um, I hit him with some really good body shots, and I kind of took my foot off the gas because I wasn't too sure if he was hurt, but it was times I hit him with a body shot, I'm going to go, ugh. And he was, people tell me he's icing his body in the middle of the rounds. But like I said before, you know, he was a tough guy. Um, every time I relax and focus and use my jab, I was catching him clean. The body shots were there. But like I said, it's an improvement. It's a better improvement than my last fight. And um, I'm still 20 pounds bigger, and I'm only, only going to get better. It's only going to get better, you know. And he's a tough guy, durable guy, and, um, you know, went 12 rounds. I needed 12 rounds, though, to show people I can go 12 rounds. Coach Anthony here with Behind the Gloves. Uh, congratulations on your, on your performance. Now, I got a question from a strategic standpoint. Mm. I seen you was throwing the right hand to the body a lot. Mm. I don't know if the game plan was to throw the right hand to the body to get him to drop that left elbow so you could come with the overhand right. I seen Correct. you attempt that a few times. Correct. I got two questions, so I'll just let you go ahead and answer that. Um, the main thing was we, worked in, uh, we went back to the basics in boxing. Jabs to the body, fake jabs, left folks, right hand to the body, touch him, touch him, break his, bring his hands down. And a couple of times it worked. Um, like I said, I think I need to go back and get my footwork back a little faster. My footwork was there, but it kind of... Um, slowed down as the rounds went. So I said, like I said before, it's a lot better than my last performance. The main thing is going back to the drawing board and continue off of those things because I had some really good sparring. My, my jab was on point better than the last fight. So it's going back to the basics and having fun with it, man. Like I said, this fight was, actually, it was a fun fight for me. It was fun. Duapas gave me 12 rounds that I needed to see. I, I know I can go anyway, but to show the fans. And I got good body shots. Like I said, it's all about improvement. And I'm, I know he's, he's a tough opponent. And I'm no way discouraged. I know a lot of guys can't go 12 rounds with him and look that good. And he had a full camp. Full camp, well, not no 48 hours, not no four weeks like a Deontay fight. He had a full camp over 10 weeks. And, and, and that's what, that was another point. You looked very good in the first couple of rounds. It looked mm. like in the middle rounds you started to get a little gassed. I don't know if you was gassed, but mm. it kind of looked like you were getting caught a little bit with uppercuts and shots yeah. that you weren't getting touched with in the first couple of rounds. Correct. Were you getting tired? No, I wasn't getting tired. What happened was a little frustration because I know I wanted to get him out there kind of bad, and I know I hurt him, but I just couldn't put the combination I want together. So you know what, let me reset, give myself like a half a round around. Breathe, look for the open, let me see what I got. And it's all about, it's all about you know, 
adjusting on the fly. So I gave myself a round to adjust. You know, let me see what I got in front of me. And then from there, my corner to me is go back to the jab. If you can't get him out there, just put pressure on him and back him up and get these rounds in. That's what happened. This, I just on the fly. Instead of going for the knockout, just add accumulation of punches and beat him up, make him, make him hurt. All right, so my last question is who do you want next, man? I mean, um, listen, like I said before, you know, Eddie Hearns made promises count countless to other fighters. Um, let's get this straight. I am not signed with matchroom boxing at Eddie Hearns. Let's get that clarified. For the 100 times, if another reporter reports that, I'm gonna come see you personally. I am have my own promotional company. I'm my own boss. I'm Big Baby Promotions, and this is my partner, Salida Promotions. Okay, Team Hummins and Cheeseburgers all day. Remember that. Okay, um, we have a deal with HBO, and it was in their interest to help build my profile on an Eddie Hearn undercard, and that's what you have here. Uh, we are not signed with Eddie Hearn. We have our own thing going on, but it was in the best interest that we help go on Eddie Hearn card to help build my profile. That's all that is. Um, of course we want the AJ fight. You know, Eddie Hearn's been talking a lot that AJ's going to come to Brooklyn, he's going to do this and do that. I'm not going to sit here and get on my knees and beg. That's not New Yorkers. That's not, we work hard, we earn our shot. If you're going to bring New York, I would gladly bust his behind. If not, we have Chagayev in Germany who has no TV, but he has a belt. Now, we could probably make that happen when I resign with HBO, because we have negotiations again, and bring Chagayev over here on a main event. Manuel Char, Manuel Char, Manuel Char. You know, that would be a great, be a headline of great New York, me and him versus the, 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 the German dude, and we could headline out in New York. You know, that would be my next best option if Eddie Hearn doesn't want to bring Anthony Joshua. And I'm not going to beg for it. I'm here. If you're going to put his money where his mouth is, make it happen. If not, you're not going to sell me a dream like you did Ortiz and Dylan White and all the other guys. I'm not going to do that. Cool? Good evening. Um, congratulations on your victory. Um, my name is Yang. I represent NY Mindset. Um, coming into the fight, you was 304 pounds. Mm -hmm. um, do you think going into fighting Joshua or Deontay Wilder, do you think you can come in at that weight and be effective? Um, like I said before, my main thing is adjusting and see how camp goes. And my promise come through the four pounds? I don't think so, because I'm constantly training. Like I said, my main focus for this fight was bulking back up, getting my strength back and feeling comfortable with my weight. So we got up pretty high, pretty fast, and I had to bring it down gradually, not killing myself trying to make a weight. As you can see, my performance was a lot better at 304 than 280-something. So like I said, I'm, I'm right back in the gym Monday. We getting weights, you know what I mean? It's still your set. That's how we say in the gym, man. By Monday, I'm back on the weight training. You know what I mean? So uh, we're going to continue training, still keep my cardio, still do my kickboxing, my MMA, and um, just bring the weight down gradually and try to keep my strength. You know, I got time, so I'm going to go back to the footage, look at it, see what I need to improve on. And to me, I think, all I, I think the main thing for me is footwork. I think once my feet keep moving and my head is moving, I beat every one of these guys. The minute I stand still, if you notice, a couple of times he caught me with some good shots because I stood, I stood there and didn't pop my jab. Like I said before, I took 11 months off. I took three fights against good guys. You know, good guys. So the main thing is going back to the drawing board, look at the footage, and um, put some James Brown on and get cooking. Any further questions? Who's next? Uh, and I also, I also want to acknowledge. Um, as you know, my, my background is, uh, is Muay Thai kickboxing. Um, there's a great martial arts school out in, um, in, in Florida where I'm looking to um, get a place out there, man. There's a lot of good MMA fighters out there. Henry Hoof, um, Hard Knocks 360s, a lot of big guys out there in that gym. You know, Tyrone Spong, Rashad Evans, Anthony Rumble Johnson, um, The Menace, Mr. Bermudez. Uh, you used to be the Black Zillions now. They have their own thing, the Hard Knock 365, which is Henry Hoof. And even though it's hard to get boxing sparring, a lot of MMA guys bring it. They have this warrior mentality. Even though I'm a boxer, they bring it, you know. So it's a great camaraderie that I grew up around with martial arts and Muay Thai where everybody try to help each other. And it's a different vibe, you know. New York, this weather in New York, we all know, sucked. You know, so I had to get down to Florida, and that's why I want to be and be able to train all year round and go outside of it and, and just have fun, you know. So my next thing is actually opening a camp in Belize, you know, where I can go back to my, my home country and just train in the sun and run on the beach and drink coconut water, you know. So that's another thing. Um, no, I don't, I don't have no plans to fight MMA right now. Like I said, I'm number two, number one contender after this fight for sure. So I think going to MMA would actually hurt my profile for me to go and do that sport. Now, if I'm, when I'm world champion and I beat a couple guys up, we got a $100 million contract by Bellator UFC, then that makes sense. You know? But right now, it wouldn't make sense for me to go do MMA. Brother Jarrell, this is uh, James Bell here from The Boxing Source. What's good? I'm good, man. I'm good. Just wanted to ask a question about your uh, overall stamina for this particular fight. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, it was mentioned before that you came in at 304.4 pounds. But how did you feel inside the ring uh, there, like going into round six, seven, and then over to round 12? 
Um, my stamina felt overall good. Like I said before, there was times where I feel like I clipped with some good shots where I had to kind of, you know, adjust and reevaluate myself and just take a little time to see what I got in front of me. You know, it wasn't that I was exhausted. It was just that I didn't want to get clipped clip with kind of shots. I wanted to just kind of relax, get my breathing back, just figure out exactly what I have in front of me. And that's what I did. I think between sixth, seventh, and eighth round, I kind of got hit with a couple shots, but then I kind of readjusted myself. You know, but my stamina felt good. Like I said, we spawned 12, 15 rounds in the gym with guys that's undefeated, you know what I mean? Like, all these guys have sparring partners, but they have seven, eight losses. It's a lot different when you spar a guy that have losses, you know, like guys undefeated, like Adam Kowanaki, and number one amateur in, in, in the country. These guys are trying to book my butt, but these are my boys, so I know when I'm doing something wrong, they're going to tell me how to fix it. So, like, my stamina is good, and I said the main thing is, is being able to be tired and be able to think. You know, a lot of guys get tired and can't think. They start throwing wild shots like Beyonce Wilder, or AJ, who just sit there and then the referee stop a fight when he land one or two shots. Nah, we ain't doing that. Everything you see, I've, every fight I've had so far the last year, I had to work to get these wins. The draw Washington fight. How was I fight a draw till I stopped him? Because he's an Al Heyman got an Al Heyman card. I beat his behind every round, but it was a draw to the point I stopped him. Morris Watt, another tough guy. Beat his butt, stopped him in nine. So I had to work for everything I got so far, man. Cool. Thanks, Cheeseburger! Let's go! Thank you uh, for staying out, ladies and gentlemen. Great fight at the Barclays Centre tonight. Thank you, baby. Daniel Jacobs becomes the mandatory challenger for the WBA world title, but more impressively, how do you look good, that good, after a fight like that? <laughs> Sponsored by Gucci here tonight. <laughs> and uh, Danny, over to you to say a few words. Oh, <clears throat> well, first off, a uh, tough customer in Seleski, undefeated. And my thing is, being that I'm called out these top names and I can't get those top names when I want them, we go down a list of great contenders. He showed tonight that he had true grit, he showed tonight that he belonged. And however you want to grade the performance, the crowd definitely enjoyed. And ultimately, that's what it's about. So I'm happy with my performance. And I look forward to bigger and better things. Thank you. To the floor, guys, for questions. Um, you said after the fight that you um, were able to knock him down in between punches. What was different in that moment versus the other? 11 rounds. Well, my trainer said I set it up with the jab, and that's kind of what we abandoned. Uh, going into the fight, I knew I had to look impressive, and I was wanting to get the knockout, but he was a tough, durable guy. You know, sometimes you got to set it up, you got to take your time. And um, in the later rounds, he was, both of us was a little bit more tired, and um, I caught him perfectly, but it was all set up from the jab. And I know going forward that I can't really abandon my jab as much as my trainer tell me to you know, implement it inside that, inside that ring. So going forward, I'm looking forward to bigger and better things and fixing mistakes um, each, every time out. Uh, Daniel, over here on your right. Uh, you said in the ring that you were confident going to the 12th that you were ahead and so you could go for the knockout there. But it, there had been a lot of ebb and flow in the middle rounds. He kind of found his punching range. At the end of 10 rounds, uh, it seemed like you had a different sense of urgency in the 11th and 12th. Did you feel anything there like you had to step it up? No, I just wanted to finish strong. Uh, you know, I keep, like I said, I keep a dialogue with my trainers inside the corner. And uh, every round, they let me know I was up. And every round that maybe was a little toss up, he'd let me know I could have done better. Um, so going into the later rounds, the championship rounds, I mean, ultimately, what I was thinking was just to give these fans a great show with a bang out. And that's really what I wanted to do. I just wanted to stand toe to toe, uh, try my best to, to get the knockout. Well, you know, in boxing, sometimes if you just take a second, things will slow down. And you're able to see a lot more openings. And I think the urgency that I had going in there, try to knock them out, I really had to pace myself a little bit more. Uh, and once we set up the jab, and it we was working on inside the gym, throwing our hands slanted because we knew he was a taller guy, and he throws the one-two effectively. Uh, that's how he stopped Centeno. So I knew that if I can put a little angle on it, uh, especially behind the jab with a little bit more force, um, you know, we'll get a great shot of knocking him out. But he, he got up and he showed grit, man. I, I love it. I mean, Polish guys have nothing but, uh, they're known for bringing it, and nothing but respect to him. And like I said, I look forward to bigger and better things in the future. Da Danny Jacobs, Coach Anthony over here with Behind the Gloves. What's up, brother? Hey, how you doing? Um, you look very good tonight. Everybody obviously, you know, wants to see maybe the Charlo fight or Triple G or one of these guys again. But now that we got Eddie Hearns here, how about Billy Joe Saunders, man? What's up, what's up with a fight with you and Billy Joe? Uh, it's something that I've been pushing for for a very long time. But I think um, he's been using his promoter. I think Eddie and him got a little beef. 
something like that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Too What's much up with about that, Eddie? That. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Beef? <laughs> I don't know too much about Me. it, but uh, yeah, I think that the, the main issue is is that Billy Joe Saunders is not really known over here in the U.S. and it's very difficult. If he's going to come to the U.S., the money he's going to want to the fight, Danny Jacobs. Very sure. He's going to price himself out of the fight. So, but the thing is with the middleweight division right now is Billy Joe's been waiting for Gennady Golovkin for a long time, and now obviously the May 5th's not happening. September the 15th is happening, so Billy Joe's going to miss out on that big fight again. Mm-hmm. And there isn't really anyone else out there for him to fight. So I think the most impressive thing that Danny's done is he's fought two guys where he hasn't got a lot to gain in those fights, but they have everything to gain. Mm-hmm. You know, the first one, an undefeated fighter against Arias. This one, a much better fighter than Arias in Suleki. You know, and he's come through. So he's proved his worth. He's the one going out there fighting the undefeated guys. And now... He must have a marquee fight next because he will rise and box even better against the better fighters. And, you know, I think it's very important that he fights a Charlo, Golovkin, Derevchenko. Um, how about how about Danny going to the UK to fight Billy Joe? Oh, I would, I would love to fight him in his own backyard. They, I'm that confident that they I'll can definitely, They can definitely make us an offer yeah. or we can put a show on. But again, <laughs> you know, um, we're, we're proud of, of uh, the deal we've done with Danny. And also the fact that he's doing extremely well over here and he has HBO backing him and they've backed him in, in two fights and now they want, along with us, the big one. You know, we came to HBO to fight Gennady Golovkin or, or Canelo. Since then, the division has, has split and opened up a little bit. So there are big marquee fights out there for him outside of those two. But, you know, again, it's really on the network to, to deliver the fights that we came for. And that's Gennady Golovkin and Canelo. So obviously it slowed down a little bit in that process, but you know it was a great atmosphere tonight. Danny entertained the crowd, and I feel that next time we're back here, you know the crowd's going to be even bigger. And if it's a marquee name rather than a guy that no one's heard of before, with all due respect to Selecki, even though he's a great fighter, it's going to do very, very well. Danny and the Emilio ES News man, uh, congratulations with the win. I just really want, I was talking about it with Chris earlier in the week. He was telling me how you guys would like text and send YouTube videos of like the old Archie Moore stuff. So just from the boxing perspective, getting into your boxing mind a little bit, was it a little bit experimental in the ring? Because mm-hmm. I thought you, with the Archie Moore, the cross guard defense and you turning southpaw, do you think that you really just used this fight as kind of a test to bring out some new tools in your arsenal? And Absolutely, maybe the, yeah, okay. 100%. I definitely think um, in boxing, you know, sometimes you got to try new things. And I'm a student of the game. I love to learn different things. I love to apply different things inside the ring, not just in sparring matches, but in actual batch. <clears throat> um, I knew that he wasn't the biggest power puncher, so there's several risks that I can take with trying to learn different things. And ultimately, when I fight those bigger names or bigger punchers, then you know, hopefully I've had enough experience to be able to implement those things uh, sufficiently. Uh, Danny, uh, Keith Eidick from BoxingScene.com. Uh, what are your thoughts on the possibility, uh, if the IBF strips Golovkin of his title, of possibly fighting Derevianchenko, who obviously you have a close relationship with, and Andre, of course, trains? I have no idea. I leave that up to my my team. Uh, obviously, we want the big names. Uh, with all due respect to Dermachenko, we want to have those opportunities. Um, he's like family. He's a part of my stable. Um, so it would definitely take a lot. But at the end of the day, you know, we have uh, bigger names, uh, the green belts, and you know, the uh, I'm just ultimately the the big names. That's really truly what we want. And obviously, me and Charlo got a little thing going on, so that's something that you know I'm trying to pursue as well. Um, but if the opportunity presents itself, and this is the only opportunity, you know, I would have to think long and hard about that. All right, Daniel Jacobs, James Bell with the Boxing Source. Um, we talked a little bit after the press conference as far as like how Selecki would approach the fight, and that he may uh, give you a little bit more openings. Were you surprised a little bit about like how he was able to move? around the ring and in and out of the pocket, especially in the first few rounds? Well, I, not necessarily. I just think that I didn't really want to go in there and box him because I, I realized that when I was going side to side and I was using my jab and using my skill, that he would you know, fall off balance, that he would miss me, he would have to find me again. And I knew I could win that fight like that each and every round, but I didn't want to fight that fight. I wanted to knock him out and you know, show a message to the world. And um, he wasn't successful doing that, but and the end result, we still had a great show, and that's really what it's about. Andre Rosier, Danny Jacobs seemed to Rosier, be a... Rosier, f- he's a Rosier. Ah. Excuse, my, Rosier. excuse my English that's accent. Excuse, <laughs> excuse my English accent. 
Danny Jacobs seemed clear up on the scorecards. Was you a bit worried when he seemed to press the fight to sort of impose himself on the crowd a little bit when he could have shut up shop and maybe stood behind the jab? Well, no, uh, we we have viewed uh, many a tape uh, on Selecki and actually um, we noticed that when pressure was applied to him that he would have negative responses. And that's what we were actually looking for. Behind the jab and um, for Danny to go downstairs to the body. And as you saw in the bout, every time Danny pressured Selecki and threw wonderful body shots, the reaction was just what we were looking for. We, we needed a little bit more of that, um, but I had to settle Danny down a bit because he was hungry for a knockout. It's almost like a shark in, in blood um, saturated waters. You, you can't stop it because they want it so bad, but we had to settle him down and get him to work the way he was supposed to. As in the 12th round, where that beautiful knockdown came from almost a lack of effort. He didn't try and it floated its way across that ring and to Selecki's chin and you saw what the end result was. Well, I mean, we have a date with Destiny against Golovkin. I would love to have that rematch. Um, I thought Danny did enough to win the first fight, and um, I think he deserves a, another shot at the title, another crack at um, reform and, and to get revenge for a very, very, very close bout. Uh, if not, then uh, there's... There's the grudge match with Charlo. He's been talking a good one. And as Eddie said uh, <laughs> so eloquently about losing his soul in the basement of the Barclays Center, um, whatever is at the top of the mountain, that's where we want to climb. You've had disputes and past moments with Billy Joe Saunders with your fighter, Avadil Katsinze. <laughs> Are you prepared to put Jacobs in that sort of situation? Well, actually, the first dispute that Billy Joe and I had was because of Danny. And I told him, I said, well, I heard you mouthing off about my son. And he says, your son? He says, I'll whoop your ass with your son. <laughs> and that's when it all started. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, it was a, a lot of um, um, entertainment banter. After it was all over, he actually came over and hugged me and said, Coach, you know, it's just for the cameras. I really have a lot of respect for you. And I'm Crystal Hart reporting from the Barclays Center here in Brooklyn, New York. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Thanks for watching and we'll see you at the fights.